Hello, welcome to another video in the Networker training series. In today's video, we will be looking at how to install Networker on Windows. We will be looking at how to install Networker Client, Storage Node, and Networker Server on a Windows environment. First, before you install a Networker uh, on any of your system, you would have to first determine the role that that particular system is going to carry out. So if in case you want to protect a particular system, then you would have to install the Networker client on that system. If in case you need a system as a storage node or a media server, you would have to install the storage node component on it. And if you want to use this or uh, use a particular Windows system as a Networker server, then you would have to install the Networker component on it. Let's go ahead and see from where we can download this installation files. So the installation files can be downloaded from the Dell EMC support site as you might have, if you might have already followed the installation video for Linux, uh, the Linux uh, came in a tar dot, uh, gz uh, compressed file, whereas the Windows uh, installation files come with uh, a dot zip file. So once you download this down to your machine wherever you want to do the installation or to your main repository you can go ahead and un uncompress this so basically you are going to find a couple of files uh, uh, within that particular uncompressed folder uh, of which you have a folder called networker and within the networker folder you have essentially three files out of which two of the files are lgtoclnt dot uh, exe and the LGTO XTD CLNT. So if you have been using Networker from before, you might remember that with prior to Networker 9.x, uh, the installation file for Windows was just one EXE file which contained the Networker client, storage node and the Networker server role all together. But after, but starting with 9.0, uh, EMC has decided to split up the installation files uh, between the or uh, more precisely they have created a, a separate installation file for the uh, client and extended client this has been done to reduce the size of your client uh, installation binary so that you need not copy the entire uh, networker uh, installation file which is around 7 600 to 700 MBs and uh, this being a smaller file is easier to copy out through all the clients which needs protected so these are the uh, installation files for the client so the client uh, CLNT LGTO CLNT file being the basic installation file which only contains the minimum required binaries that are required for a file system backup uh, to be done for a particular system whereas if in, in, if in case you need uh, additional modules to be installed or additional tools that are required for troubleshooting then you would consider installing the LGTO CLNT uh, XTD CLNT uh, package as well. Whereas, uh, as I already mentioned, if in case you want to install the networker storage node as well as the networker server, then you would need to uh, install the uh, uh, bind, uh, do the installation in the, using the networker.exe. So again, the version of the uh, the version on the file naming convention would change depending on what version you have. So let's go ahead and quickly see how to do this installation. So I will be doing this installation on a Windows 2012 system. So as uh, as mentioned, when you do when you unzip the folder, this is what you come up with, and within this folder you have additional uh, files. The GSTDB uh, um, unload is essentially meant for migrating the NMC database from the previous version, that is the SQLite version, to the PostgreSQL version. Uh, the NMUI is the Networker GUI, which is a new feature uh, starting with 9.x. This is not yet full-fledged, uh, not completely useful right now because it does not have all the features that the Java-based applet-based uh, management console has. So. We will not dive into that as of now. So these are the files that we are more interested in. That is the the client files. So as you see the size, it is very less compared to the bundle, the main bundle that is. 
so what we will do is we will be installing the network server on this particular system so again if you want to use just the client then you can go ahead and install these two systems or these two files here let's go ahead and run this installation file for us so the version that we are going to install is 18.203 good there it launches before I continue I just want to go ahead and show you that it is going to be installed in the default location there is program files here so we don't have anything installed right now so let's go ahead and start the installation so we say to not configure so we are going to install the server as well as the client when we say the server as and the client it it means that it is going to install the server the storage node as well as the client if you need wanted to install just the client you could select this or you could simply copy the other two installation files and uh, install the network boundaries from that if you wanted to install the storage node you could select only the storage node that means that it is going to install the client binaries as well as the storage node binaries but right now we are going to install the server role on this system so we are going to use the third option which is the network uh, server and client which means that it is going to install the network server the network client and the network storage node binaries along with this i am also going to install the network management console on this particular system here you can change the default location of the installation in uh, some enterprises they the best practice is to keep the application file separate from the OS uh, file system so if you have that kind of process then you, you can go ahead and install this on the D drive or E drive or whichever best practice that you have so let's click on next so we'll say this is about the licensing say okay so this is going to this is about configuring the auth C service so we will say that the auth C service host name is this and the port is 1990 which is the default port we will not going to uh, change this the keystore password let's go ahead and give it a keystore password the keystore password is meant to encrypt your uh, auth C key store and if in case you're upgrading after this particular installation then for e during every upgrade it is going to ask you for the key store password for an existing key store so if whenever it does that you have to give the password that you have set right now or if in case you completely want to destroy your existing key store password and create a new key, key store password uh, key store that is also fine so this is it uh, the initial administrator password so as you know with networker 9.x onwards the authentication role has been completely offloaded from the nmc to the networker server itself so initially uh, in prior to 9.0 what used to happen is the users and the authentication were configured on the networker management console server but with 9.0 onwards this has been taken care by the auth c service so the password that you're setting right now is the password for the administrator user on the auth c which essentially is going to be used to log into the nmc as well let's click on next so this is these are the options for the nmc nmc again default i'm going to leave all as it is this is the authentication host so if in case you have a different authentication auth c server, server that you want to use with this nmc you can mention that here along with the port number so again this is regarding the nmc we don't have any existing nmc databases so we are not going to migrate anything here click on next and the installation would start While we wait for the installation to complete, I would like to talk to you about the networker runtime uh, environment. So runtime environment is essentially another tool which is provided by EMC, which has the Java tool bundled within it. So by using the NRE, we need not worry about uh, the Java being installed uh, because of the new licensing uh, uh, rules from uh, Oracle and stuff. So 
by simply installing the NRE, we have the system wherever we want the network server to be run ready for installation. The NRE is also helpful wherever you want to, or on a system wherever you want to manage the networker as well, uh, since we know that the networker management console is a Java based applet by installing the NRE on wherever uh, on the management system wherever you are manage or you want to manage the networkers uh, on you can have the system ready for uh, for managing as well since the NRE has the correct version of Java that is required for particular Java applet so now we see that the installation is almost complete the services have already been started and there you are Installation is complete. We click on finish and you can see the installation folder here. So if you go into this, the management folder is for the NMC, the NSR folder is for the network server. Uh, you will see the different so, uh, folders that are within this. So we, are, we will have another uh, video explaining the different folder structure within Networker so that you better understand how exactly the folders are structured within Networker. Put in the credentials that you had uh, set to, uh, while setting up the RC. <coughs> On launching the NMC for the first time, you will be uh, asked to accept the EULA. This is the initial configuration wizard that you get. Let's go ahead, go through the uh, wizard. This is the setting up of the authentication server, adding the network server to the NMC. Let's do that. This is for the backing up of the NMC. This is for management. Run finish. And there we have, let's go ahead and launch the NMC for the first time. So this is the network management for our respective backup server that we have installed. So we can go through the different resources that are available. This is a vanilla installation, so you would not have any kind of devices or anything else configured. Uh, in the coming videos, we will be looking at the different resources, how they are configured, how resources are configured, how backup is configured and all those things. Uh, for now, let's go ahead and end this video. Thanks for sticking to the till the end. Uh, hope to see you on the upcoming videos. Bye-bye.